Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I've been looking for an excuse to get back outside. It's only been about six months since I've uncovered my mount, which is still sitting outside, and tried to use it for anything. The weather still isn't cooperating uh, that well, at least not to support imaging sessions overnight. But one thing I wanted to do, a little simple project, is to go back and remeasure the local horizon that I use in Stellarium, which is kind of important from an image session planning perspective, and measure it instead using the actual mount and telescope to sight in on the boundary of the horizon. For example, over here, I would follow along the boundary here with several points using my telescope. In this case, I'm using the Uniguide 50 guide scope. I need a wide angle scope for this effort, and my poor little uh, GT81 is just a very expensive interface plate for my guide camera here, which is the only camera that's operating in this little process. Anyway, I thought I'd share these this process with you and these results just for the heck of it. It's kind of fun. So let's take a look at uh, what we're going to do here. So I have a typical horizon, probably not as, as bad as some of you are dealing with, but for me, this area back in here to the south is particularly troublesome because there are some really good southern targets that I can only pick up at the meridian here, and then they pass and hit this chimney, the neighbor's chimney over here. Understanding where and when these obstructions are going to hit is kind of critical to planning out uh, imaging sessions for, for example, the Gordon Nebula or the Trifid Nebula. And there's some others that are right there in the southern sky that, that I'm already handicapped with because my house is back here blocking that view. And so what I'm going to try to do is use the guide scope as the sighting scope and use astrophotography tool to manually locate the edge of the boundary and pick off these points along the way here. Now, for example, the edge of the chimney here is this point here in the astrophotography tool. And I really need that accurate assessment of this boundary to know when I can start uh, chasing targets and what targets to, to go ahead and roll out because the horizon is just not going to support it. So that's kind of the idea here. Now, I have the existing local horizon already entered into Solarium. This is the one I measured using the Diopter app. So it's already in there. And again, there's that chimney. Here's the meridian. And so any target that I can pick up here very soon after it hits the chimney, I'm down for about 30 to 45 minutes until I can reacquire the target and get back on. And then, of course, I'm hitting low on the horizon. So there's these targets are very challenging for me. I want to update the Stellarium horizon once I get this new version of the local horizon measured with the mount and the telescope. What we're going to do is to uh, fire up astrophotography tool. I'm going to put it into live view mode and just monitor the image as I manually slew the telescope using the, the next remote handset for my CGEM. And then I'm gonna, when I get to an edge of the, of the horizon, I'm just going to go up here and read out the values of the uh, altitude and azimuth values. I'm going to snap a picture of the, a screenshot of this and toss that image into a PowerPoint file, then move on to the next point on the horizon and repeat the process. And then after all is said and done, I have a PowerPoint full of these kind of images here. I'll go back in and type in the alt and as values uh, for later analysis. So let's go take a look at a very sped up video of what this process looked like. Okay, so I'm loading up astrophotography tool, setting up live view. I've got a green screen because I don't think I have the the uh, bear property set properly for this camera. That's okay. I don't really use this for taking color images and I'm not that concerned about the color here. So I'm going to maneuver it around, get focus, and as you can see I'm just moving this thing over, obviously very sped up, finding the horizon, taking a snapshot, put it into PowerPoint, move the telescope over again, find the horizon, sometimes out of focus, but good enough for locating the horizon. Take a screenshot, put it back into PowerPoint, and just keep going around the uh, horizon. Just collect the data for uh, later analysis. So here's the original set of data I collected using the phone app. And now what I want to do is to add in the points that I measured did using the mount and the telescope. And here are those points. So as you can see, it's actually pretty good agreement. Uh, some things are different. Certainly this edge here seems to have been captured okay. I'm sure I was a little bit uh, careless here only because this is such at a low at such a low altitude i have no intention of imaging down to five degrees altitude so i think this is a fairly accurate representation on the other side the neighbor's tree which i did not include in my original survey 
is uh, making a pretty good cutout into my horizon. And then there's a bit of an offset here. Now, I don't know whether to blame this on the cell phone or error in initial deck and RA values. I suspect it's more the cell phone because there's no way I could have this much error in the uh, initial RA and deck. And then here is a chimney which I of the neighbor's house I did not include in the original uh, survey. And then it comes down, it gets pretty accurate here, and then it jumps up to my house. And now I can see that I have more obstruction here than what the original uh, cell phone app derived data is telling me I have. And then this is where we get to the meridian at 180. And it's here that I pick up those targets like the gourd and the trifid nebula. And that's where it hits the chimney. This excursion here is the chimney as it's measured by the mount and telescope. I need to simplify the data here. I've got a lot of redundant points. I don't need that much detail. I just need to simplify it down a little bit. And if I go through and throw out some of the points and, and create a nice line to finish things up, making sure I start at zero and end at 360, capture a little bit here for the tree that's over there, then I can just peel away all the data points. And now what I need to do is to take this yellowish line here, put it into Solarium and replace the data from the orange line. And so that's what we want to go do now. So let's go over and update Horizon in Stellarium. So if you haven't done this, uh, the, there are custom landscapes available within Stellarium. So go to your directory where you have Stellarium installed, go down to the landscapes folder, open that up. And if you're just setting one of these up, you'll create your own directory for your horizon. There are already some examples in here uh, that you can look at. Mine is called home and the backyard text is the text file containing those values that were plotted in Excel. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this and so we'll edit this guy here are the original data points from the horizon measured with the cell phone app i'm going to just delete those and go over to excel where i had all the data and this is the new set of azimuth altitude points and paste this into the file And I'll save that. And let's go start Solarium and see if it takes effect. If I take the clock forward to a nighttime view. So here is the new horizon. Here is the tree that's just behind my telescope coming around. Here is the new location of the chimney down the street behind me. And then it comes in and picks up on my behind me for my house and comes down and across and back to the chimney again. So no, it's pretty easy to update the horizon once you've measured it in this way. And now I'll use this horizon going forward with uh, image session planning. Well, the mount's been sitting out there for six months and I've kind of been wondering, does the darn thing still work? So I wanted something simple, a simple project to get back outside and test the mount out to make sure it works before I hold all of my imaging equipment out there for a a uh, soon to be doomed imaging session and i thought this was a good one to do it's i've been meaning to get out there and and measure the horizon using a telescope instead of the cell phone app so i thought this would be a good chance to do that now the phone app i use is called dioptra and it's for android i'm not sure if there is one for the iphone it's actually pretty good it takes a picture gives you the altitude gives you the azimuth but I'm sure there are errors. The sensors in those uh, those phones are only so accurate in terms of measuring the orientation of the phone. So there had to be some error associated with that. It's pretty convenient. It doesn't have the same identical perspective as the telescope. So that's one of the things that I wanted to do was to see if I could get those better results with the actual view that the telescope has. Ideally, you kind of want to use a wide field telescope for this. The widest thing I've got is that guide scope, the Uniguide 50. So it's a 200 millimeter. It's barely accepted. A 100 millimeter might be better for this, uh, but it worked fine. I think you just want something that has a wide enough field of view that you can recognize what you're looking at when you're slewing over to try to find points to, to zero in on. I uh, would manually slew the scope over using the Celestron uh, software control, the Next Remote, and then I watched Live View using ast an astrophotography tool to uh, see when the center of the image 
matched up with a line on the horizon, some point on the horizon. Then I just screen captured that image, saved it off to PowerPoint for later data entry. The whole thing took about an hour, so it wasn't that long, actually. Looking at the results, I got fairly good agreement. There are uh, some differences that I really can't attribute to initial error in the RA and deck. The mount was polar aligned. I polar aligned it the night before, or checked the polar alignment. It hadn't shifted much in the past six months, so that hung in there. Uh, so I suspect that most of the errors that I'm seeing are due to the uh, errors in the cell phone sensors rather than the initial errors in RA and deck. But in any event, as I get back out and do some imaging sessions, I can double check certain points on the horizon and uh, adjust the data accordingly. The best news of all though is that the mount still works after being out there for six months unattended and not checked. So electrically everything seems to be working just fine. There's a few rust spots on the counterweights but that's the way it goes. Well that's all I've got for now guys. Clear skies maybe. Talk to you later.